Hey, what's up? In this video, I'll be revisiting my ultrasonic cleaner circuit. So my previous one was actually made out of just a single NA555 timer, which is one MOSFET. The problem with doing a circuit like this for ultrasonic cleaner is that you have just one-sided asymmetric pulses. And what you really want is pulses on both sides. And you can see a difference between my old and new circuit. The newer one is much quieter as well. So I'll be redesigning the circuit from scratch. And when you actually attach a transducer to a canister like this, what's gonna happen is you may change the resonant frequency. So first thing I wanna do is measure the resonant frequency of this setup. And so to do this, you're gonna want an oscilloscope and a frequency generator. You're gonna want at least a two channel oscilloscope for this to work. And so when you plug this thing in, you're going to want to have the one end of the probe to be on the positive end and the ground on the ground, of course. And then you want to have one probe on the beginning of the, the resistor. And this resistor is going to be the shunt. And whatever voltage you see on there is going to be the represent the current. And so when you hook this up, you want to see the maximum current you possibly can. And the purple one represents the current. As I'm adjusting this, it's about 40 kilohertz for the maximum voltage. So here are the components I used to make the circuit. I used a 10 watt 1 ohm resistor. I used two RFZ44N MOSFETs, a 4700 picofarad capacitor. I see is a CD4047 and two 3 kilo ohm resistors and a variable 10 kilo ohm resistor. This will act as my transformer. I use five turns on both sides and this is going to be the center tap coil and uh, the secondary coil has about 70 turns. So I made my circuit simpler to this one right here. Very simple. This is what the circuit looks like on a breadboard. I have the two probes going into the output and the ground going to the ground of the circuit. So the CD4047 is the A-stable multi-vibrator. Basically you can use this to power two different MOSFETs, one's going to be up, one's down. And you can use this to power an H-bridge or whatever you want. And the best thing is the overlap is very minimal, so you're not going to risk shorting your circuit and blowing things up. Okay, I have everything hooked up. The output of that goes to the transducer is going to my oscilloscope because I just want to see how the signal looks before I attach everything and set everything up to full power. And there we go. That's what I'm looking for. And it's at 40.6 kilohertz. Now that we have everything hooked up, time to turn this thing on and see if it finally works. I don't want to run this for very long because it's going to start melting my wires and melting my breadboard. So I'm just going to show snippets and get everything closed off. I can already smell smoke. <laughs> So turning this thing up, I'm going up to 15 volts at 4 amps. So that's 4 amps running through those wires. Not ready for 4 amps. All right, so this is the completed circuit. I still kept the variable resistor in there so I could change the frequency whenever I want. And also I could multi-purpose this and use it for something else other than the transducer circuit. And I put the 1 ohm resistor in the water just so it could cool it off and not get too hot because this thing's not ready for this type of power. And I only have one power supply, usually I use two, but I'm able to do this for just one. And turning it on. I have this thing capped at five amps. So, about 60 watts is going through there.
So I used this cup to suspend the fork and I ran this thing for about a couple of minutes. And this is what the fork looked like after it's been inside the cleaner for a couple of minutes. Thanks for watching.